The message today is you will not suffer. You will not suffer. Part two. God did not create you to suffer. You are created to enjoy the best of life. Jesus speaking said, I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. John 10.10. 10. But the Amplified class said that I am come that they may have and enjoy life. The Amplified class said enjoy. Use the word enjoy. Use the word what? Enjoy life. He said I came that they may have and what? Enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. So you are created for enjoyment. That is the Bible. Don't be religious. Don't be what? Jesus said, now listen carefully. The part of the Bible you accept is the part of the Bible that will benefit you. Many believe he came to die for our sins. Nobody doubts that. Many believe he was made sick that you and I might enjoy health. Also believe that he was made poor that you might be rich. And that he came for you to what? Enjoy life. Say, Jesus came for me to enjoy life. Now, Adam was not suffering until he fell. Is that true? Adam never suffered one day. It was when he fell, and Jesus came to restore you back to the dignity. Whatever Adam lost, you will receive the fullness of the blessings in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And here this year, well, in Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 2, it said, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness, gross, gross darkness, the people. He said, the people will be, there will be darkness over the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be risen upon you. So here. From this day, may God's glory bear Lord upon someone who says, Amen. <laughs> gross darkness. God's what? Now listen, this is what gross darkness is. Come up. Bring me anything. Those, all those things they used to cover anything, any cloth. Look at. Man of God. I am, can you move now? Move. move. You'll be confused. True? Gross darkness will be upon the people. Nowhere. They move here, they can't see direction. They go here, no way. There's no way this man can freely move. True? God said gross darkness will be upon the earth. Life will be full of confusion. Life will be full of what? They can't go anywhere they want to move. But they say his glory is what? Shall be risen upon his people. You know what glory is? This moment, this is glory. Can this man now begin to see where? Yes. From this day. Whatever is beclouding your destiny shall be removed from your life. Yeah. It's a great darkness to be upon what? People. But you and I, we are born again. His glory shall be risen upon you. Isaiah 60 verse 2. From this day, in the name of Jesus, whatever is covering the earth, you, light will be upon you. Yeah. You will not be a victim of that darkness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Shout aloud, amen, if you believe it. Amen. Shout aloud, amen, if you believe it. Amen. God's glory will differentiate you from what is happening in the world. Amen. The louder your amen, you have a testimony. Amen. And the, whatever veil Satan place on your destiny, whatever Satan has used to cover your life, this day that veil shall be destroyed. Amen. That covering cast, that spell, that disappointment, that shame and reproach. You go somewhere, they tell you, go, 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 go. Today it is ending in your life. Amen. The louder your amen, God's glory rests upon you. Amen. Shout a believing amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. It's a rise and shine for your light. 
His glory is risen upon thee. Arise, shine. Your light is gone. Is that true? That's the verse one. Arise, shine. For your light, what? If God's light does not come, suffering can't stop. My God. This side, stand up. Just a few here. Stand up. Arise, shine. Another person, not the same person. So another person, come. Now, this is it. Go to the end. This is how life is. Look at me. This man, go, 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 go. No, no, just move, move closer to them. When he will just pass, I'll show you something. Now, just pass them, just move past them. It's not shining. This is how your life is. Nothing. <laughs> you go here. <laughs> you come here. <laughs> you put hand. <laughs> go to bank. You are not shining. He said, rise and shine for your light is come. This same man, because it's not shining, these people don't, you know, in fact, you go to a bank, they look at you and say, 5,000, when you're looking for 20,000. You know, 20,000, nothing, nothing is working. Now, young man, arise and shine. Please, please, look at him. You are not sitting too for sitting down. Arise, shine, for your light is come. The glory of God is risen upon you. The same you now, go with that shining light. See what will happen. The same him, look at him. Just watch. It's okay. Now he's shining, the same man. The same what? He had no glory before. Do you understand him? Now in the name of Jesus, whatever has stood against your destiny, I declare, right now. Rise and shine in the name of Jesus. The same places you went last week, week before last, that nothing happened, your life nothing to show, this day, rise and shine. Rise and shine. God's glory come upon you. Say I receive the glory of God on my life. Confess it in faith, the glory of God is upon my life. Go ahead and pray for yourself in two minutes. The glory of God is upon my life. Every darkness is destroyed. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. God's glory is upon my life. God's glory is upon my life. From today, I will rise and shine. I will rise and shine. I will rise and shine. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, rise and shine from now. In the name of Jesus. Confess to somebody, I will rise and shine. Say it one more time to another person. And then you say to the person, you will rise and shine. Shout a big amen. amen. You may be seated with a big hand to Jesus. When a man shines, no darkness. Your season of shining has come. Amen. All the witches can't stop holding season. Let the wizards meet, they can't stop holding season. Your season of shining is now. Amen. You will appreciate light where there is darkness. Amen. This time the whole world is going through darkness. So they will appreciate you. Amen. Because your own case will be different. So here. I said something before. That money failing is not new. Money not available is not what? It's not new. It's been there. Many of you are young people, so you may not know, but those born in f up to from, from 50 up will understand what I'm talking about. I think 50 up, yes. Even those who are in their late 40s, we know. In this same country, for instance, Nigeria, there has been a time where money has failed over and over. This same president now was a military president. Was a military what? You people don't know. He was a military ruler before he became a civil ruler. So it's not, most of you don't know the story of Nigeria. Nigeria has had problems like this. There was a time when it was in military government where we could not buy milk. 
Many of you don't know. But I was able to do that. But then there was a man called Idiabo. He's late now. Idiabo was his chief of staff. In their regime, Nigerians could not buy milk. It was that tough. We have to queue to buy milk. Everybody will buy only one. You only buy one milk. You can't travel out of Nigeria with more than $100. It was a law. If you are going out, foreign exchange must be $100, no matter your class. $100. That's what you go with. Then they did an advert that time, Andrew, you're checking out. There was an advert that time, Andrew is checking out. He said, don't check at Andrew. So suffering is not, not only this time, it has been on. So these things are not new. They are not what? They have happened before. And they will still happen again. In the Bible too, it has happened. So nothing is new. Nothing is what? New. Don't think they are new. They are not new. Money not available is not new. It has existed before. Even in the Bible, it is not new. So don't think this is the first time it is happening. It has happened before. Genesis 47. So you don't think that uh, what is happening in Nigeria, it has happened even before you were born. Genesis 47, 15 and 16. And when money failed, did you hear that? <laughs> when money what? So money has been failing. So now I'm coming to 200, 300, 700, it's not new. Money has failed. When money failed in the land of Egypt, did you hear that? In the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, give us bread. The way you're saying, I beg, find me now, even if it's 1,000 naira. <laughs> for why should we die in thy presence? For the money failed. And Joseph said, Give your cattle. That means trade by butter. And it's not trade by butter. So I feel you have got to a point that no nada. He said, I better take this one, give me this one. <laughs> and I'll give you for your cattle if money fail. <laughs> so money failing is not a new thing. Please, I beg you, don't think that is new. But God is saying you will not be a victim of it anymore. Yeah. Shout your loud amen. As a child of God, in the midst of failure, you make a way out. Oh, here. You know what he said in Job chapter 5, verse 20 and 22? In famine like this, famine that time means hardship. The word famine then means what? Because there was, the King James English, famine means hardship. In famine, he shall redeem thee from dead. And in war, from the power of the sword. So even if they are boo, 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 God will redeem you. Do you hear that? You know, there were shootings, for instance, in Nigeria, true? In some parts of Nigeria, shootings. There was even in Portugal that was shooting. Uh -huh. He said, in the midst of that, he will redeem you. You will be a victim. You will not be... So I will never be a victim. So I won't be a victim. He said, at destruction and famine, they destroyed even banks in some states in Nigeria. He said, at its destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Do you believe this word? Do you believe this word? He said, a destruction and famine. Listen, who is speaking? When God speaks, he's speaking according to his size. God is not telling you something to get excited, saying something because it's a reality. He said, a destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. So this period, God will make you to laugh. Neither yeah. shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. Shout hallelujah. He said, there shall no evil happen to the just. Hear this and hear me when God speaks. He heaven and earth shall pass away, but not his word. Matthew 24, 35. I decree today, God's word will fulfill in your life. Amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. Shout a believers amen. amen. In the Old Testament, the church in the wilderness was exempted from all evils. I talked about they were exempted from stench and decadence. They were saved from, from stench and what? And number one. Number two, I said they were exempted from plagues and diseases. And then number three in this service. In Exodus chapter 9, 18 to 26, when you get home, you read. 18 to what? Six. Now I'll read 23, 24, 26 for time's sake. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail 
And the fire ran along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. Look at 24. So there was hail and fire mingled with hail, very grievous, very what? Such as there was none like it in the land of Egypt since it became a nation. You are great, since Nigeria became a nation, there has never been anything like this. So it's not new. Did you hear that? Since Nigeria, this is the first time where Nigerians cannot see the money they kept. True? True? Oh, so it's not new. But look at verse 26. That's where I'm going. Shall we read 26 together? Only in the land of Goshen, where the train of Israel was there. Say with me, it will be different with me. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Now listen. You know, when I preach, the Holy Ghost has a way he speaks to me. I want two people, two of you there, young men, come at the back. Two of you come. Now, you, you will close your mouth. Don't say to be different from me. Just say, I beg, I no one care, I no one care. When I say to be different from me, say, mm, I know you are this entire. Then you say, my case, it will be different with me. No matter what's happening, it will be different. You see what will happen. Now, when I say, the suffering in Nigeria, your case will be different. You say, it will be different with me. You, don't, you just say, I beg, I don't It will tire. be different. With me. You don't tire, no, so? Lord, now, be very serious, Lord, put a difference between the two of them to show that you are the one. Let it be different with the one who said to be different. Put a demarcation. I got to now? Put a what? A demarcation. You don't, you, two of you are the same church, oh. Two of you are the same church. Now, what ought to happen? Tell me to be different with me. To be different with me. In the name. In the name. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. No matter what is happening. No matter what is While you're talking, just watch. While you're even talking, something will happen. No matter what is happening. In the it land. Will be different from me. It will be different land. with me in the name of Jesus. It now I decree a total demarcation between the two of you in the name of Jesus. Nothing happened to you? Nothing happened to you? So even if now hardship is coming, it will separate him. They are the same church. They are what? But it, so that two of you are in the same church, something will happen to two of you the same way. They stone Stephen, the same Paul. Stephen died because you do not believe that God can rescue him. You can be very pious in church and then you suffer what others suffer. Depending on how you understand that. They stone Stephen. Did they stone Paul? Paul's stoning was heavier than Stephen's stoning. Read your Bible. So Paul did not die. Stephen died. That people are suffering does not mean you will suffer. Depending on how you believe. Say, I won't suffer. I won't suffer. Say it one more time. I won't suffer. Now, say you, you. Because the way you look, I want you to say, I will not suffer. Take it. I say, I will not suffer. I will not suffer. Say it one more time. I will not suffer. What is happening to the world? What's what is happening to the world? What's happening to the world? Will not happen to me. Will not happen to me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I don't want to come here and keep quiet. Then you go back to what you do. <laughs> I go back to what you Amen. Amen. Now, listen. How many of you know you will not suffer? suffer. Lift your right hand and say, I will not suffer. suffer. What the world is suffering. I will not be a victim of whatever is happening in the country where I am. My own case will be different. God will demarcate me. He will separate me from all evils. Every evil happening in the land. I will not be a victim of it. In the midst of scarcity, I will have plenty. In the midst of evil, I will not be a victim. Myself, and that concerns me will be separated from all evils. Now receive it in the name of Jesus. He said, only in the land of Goshen. Only in the land of what? Where the children of God where there was no hail. Hail connotes flood, destruction, and losses. That's the meaning. Connotes what? Destruction and losses. Israelites were exempted from diverse destructions of hail, thunder, and fire. Goshen, where I was not flawed, a thousand shall fall at that side, and ten thousand at the right hand, it shall not come near you. This week, I decree no evil shall come near you. Amen. This week, no evil shall come near you. Amen. For instance, in Nigeria, people are even running away overseas. Many people are traveling. Just say, I will go for holidays, they lie, they are afraid. <laughs> oh, people are traveling this place, they are all afraid. People are running away, oh no. But nothing will happen. I don't have to run from Nigeria because of election. I will never be a victim. You will never be a victim. Say so here. Say so there shall be no loss. 
of my life. There shall be no loss. Of anyone generally connected to me. There shall be no loss. Of any property. That belongs to me. In the name of Jesus. Say amen to that. Exodus number 4. Exodus chapter 10. 21 to 23. Exodus chapter 10, 21 to what? Now, 22 to 3, for time's sake. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness. Thick what? In all the land of Egypt. Three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. For all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. It's strange. Is that not true? Exemption from God, darkness, connotes unbearable confusion. Unbearable what? If you look at now, people are confused. Hope oh, true of us. True? People are confused. They don't know what else to do. People are confused. They don't know what else to do. But God said there was light where the children of God were. In the midst of confusion, I decree you to have divine direction. I repeat, in the midst of confusion, God will tell you what next to do. If you believe it, say amen like a believer. Amen. In the times of scarcity, God gives you direction. When others are saying, we don't know what to do, God tell you this word. To do. You will hear God's voice before today is over. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. the louder your amen, you have it done. Amen. The louder your amen, you have it settled. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, you agree with me there's so much hardship. True? So much what? Everywhere in the world. Hardship is everywhere. Hardship in Europe. Hardship in America. Hardship in Africa. Hardship in Asia. Hardship everywhere. But God did something when there was hardship in Egypt. The Israelites in Goshen had money when there was hardship. And has God changed? Has God changed? In Genesis chapter 47, 15 and 27, where we read before, it said, And when money failed in the land of Egypt, <laughs> did you hear that? When money what? And the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For money faileth. You read 27 together. One to go. When did they have, when did they grow? The time when money failed? When they grew when money failed? They tried of Israel and you, who did God love more? We're in a better covenant, true? Because there were his people, when money failed, he differentiated them, true? Do you believe the word of God at all? Oh, when money failed, there was supernatural provision for the children of Israel. Say, my case will be different. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. Do you know why I say you should say it? Do you know why I say you should say it? I don't, say th- I don't preach without knowledge. Do you know why I say you should say it? Hear what God said. So you don't just think that if you keep quiet, you walk. Job 22, 29. Read this scripture. Read it. Read. Read this scripture. Read. Read one to go. Full stop. That's your word. There's a command there. So if you don't say it, it will not happen. He said, When men are cast down, the way it is now, things are so down. Then thou shall say, There is a lifting up that shall save you. It takes humility to declare. Proud people will not talk. They say, All this thing, when they talk, you know, they talk since now. Since the, everything they talk, it happen. It takes humility to you to, to agree with the truth. A proud person will say, What am I going to talk about? I was in the bank last week, week before last. Didn't get money. He said, now, so this is what I say now, now. This mart I say is what will bring me money from Central Bank. Central Bank. What that is confusion. There's confusion everywhere now. Supreme Court is giving one. Central Bank government is giving one. President is giving one. It's a, it's a confusion. Confusion. It's a governor, uh, president is saying one thing. CBM government is saying one thing. Supreme Court is saying one thing. Just confusion everywhere. We don't know which one to follow. In the midst of confusion, and now say, I went to a bank, they didn't give me money. But most of that's how you talk. I go to a bank, they say, I don't know, no money. It's a when men are cast down. 
then thou shalt say. Say what you want. Say what is written. Don't say what is happening. Say what is what? Say your expectation. Don't say your experiences. Yes, you experience no money in the bank. Say what you expect. I know that this week my story will change. Say here. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Say this will turn for better. This will turn for what? This week, when men are cast down, then thou shall say that is a lifted for who? For me. I give you one minute to say something. Look at your life. Go ahead and say something. Go ahead and calculate. Lift, say. Open your mouth and say something in the name of Jesus. Say it the way you want to. Open your mouth and say it in the name of Jesus. Say it out. No, say it the way you want it done. Say it the way you want it to happen. Open your mouth and say it as you want it. Say it exactly how you want to see it. In Jesus' mind, so my exemption is real. As I've said it, that's it to happen. You know what Psalm Corinthians 8 9 says? So for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that through his poverty you might be what? I decree this shall be your best season. Amen. This shall be the best season for salvation ministries. Amen. Shall be the best season for your life. Amen. Best season for all of us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. You may be seated, give me a shout of praise. Things will be different with me. But let me say this to you. Now you know that exemption is what? Real. It's what? It's real. That God can make a way where there is no way. Anything you don't believe, God cannot perform. Sometimes the things of God, they look funny. They may not appeal to your senses, but just go ahead and believe it. Now, does it make sense for a young girl who, is, who has not known men for her to be told that she will get a child without a man? Does it make sense? Does it make sense? It doesn't even make economic sense. When Peter went to Jesus, I want to pay tax. I just said to him, go and go to the water, cast the hook inside the mouth of a fish. Does it make sense? No, listen. Peter asked Jesus, he want money to pay tax. Then Jesus told him, he said, go to the water, cast hook, you see them, open the mouth of a fish, you see money. Does it make sense? Listen. Does it make sense? No. But when God speaks, whether it makes sense or not, go ahead. It may not make sense, but it's out of that that God will bring his testimony. He said to Peter, Peter, you want money? Go to a river. You know, the river is this central bank. It's a fish. The, how can fish carry money? Matthew 17 to 27. He said, Peter, open the mouth of the fish. There's money there. He was only telling him, I bank anywhere. I'm not controlled by world economy. I'm not controlled by what? He was telling Peter, I'm, the world economy does not control me. Don't have you looking for money from bank. Believe the word. Oh. Hello. You'll be surprised somebody will walk to you and give you money that you never believe. Yeah. Don't be limited by bank. Be Believe the word of God. You know, our problem is, even when we say, Jesus, I believe you. Inside you say, I went to this bank, no money. Went to POS, no transfer. Went to the, hmm. This one, Papa, they talk now because in the pulpit. pit. You know, they go bank. They say, they may pray, 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 pray. It doesn't go to a bank. If they go bank, we don't know what they talk. I queue in the bank for seven hours. Is that where God is not working based on your cue? He's working on his own capacity. What is the what? Are you hearing me now? 
I believe I've traveled out of this country without money and inside the plane I got money. <laughs> on the plane. No cash. On, as I was on the plane. Because he said, I've never seen that. Or it's on the pl- Before I got to the country I was going to, I had more than what I was looking for. On board, oh, on the plane. Inside, I was at the airport, somebody ran after me. Physical car ran, ran after me, gave me a bundle of the currency of the country I was going to. Bundle of that currency. Before I, said, I was standing at the reception, somebody told look at me and walked to me. Say, well, uh, you man of God, I say yes. He said, from when you passed me, I just knew. Brought money. Not a Nigerian. He, he, you know our problem? He, this is not a they talk. He, he, he don't know how country be. If you know how country be, where country be? Country don't be anything. Me, I live in Goshen. I live in New Testament. I don't follow you for your country. I'm not a, I'm not a country man. I'm a heavenly man. Say to yourself, I, I, don't, I will not suffer what they suffer in the country. My country is different. Say one more time. My country is different. If God did in the Old Testament, they didn't think he will not do it now. Okay, you say now, now probably they know you now. When they didn't know me, you better ask my wife. When they didn't. Okay, life story. I've shared it before. Nobody knew us in Portacot. We just came newly. And then my salary then was 5,000 naira. It's not your salary that determines, it's what you know. My salary was 5,000 married man, wife, with battalion, 5,000. You know, it's not how much you have, it's what you know. And I, my, salary, my last salary in this ministry was 15,000. No? I used to be on salary. I stopped salary long ago. Long ago. To prove what I'm teaching that I can work with it. I don't work my salary. What I... Even when I was earning 5,000, my income was more than that. Then I gave the whole 5,000 out. My wife was waiting for me upstairs. I've shared it before. She said she wants to go to market. I didn't tell her. I said, I'm coming. And God said to me, give me the 5,000. I didn't doubt him. My faith is too high. I saw the 5,000. She was waiting for me to go to... She said, my husband and I will go to market. I said, so she was waiting for salary to be paid. Then I removed my tithe and give her money for market. As I dropped the 5,000, a woman in redeem, God said to her... There's a man of God who came to Portacourt. Drive to the, you know that we didn't have signposts. She, he described the church to her. He said, go there, give him 25,000, give him a bag of rice, give him this, give him this. She just came, dropped 25,000 to 25,000, great of everything she dropped. So even if I, my wife was to go to market with 5,000, she would have bought, half, divided it to 100, she would buy one. She dropped and left without seeing me. Without what? And she took her husband, a very stingy man, gave her one million. For the first time in his life, gave her one million. The chain. He too, for the first time, called the breakthrough. See the reaction? Cap, 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 cap. Okay, if I say, is she, is she, this 5,000, how can I take survive? How can I take do? I would have been that level of 5,000 to today. Let me say this to you. In the midst of hardship is when you sow. It's when you what? A farmer that will look hardship and not plant will suffer hunger. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 26, verse 1. And there was famine in the land. There was what? The way. He said, beside the first famine. So Abraham suffered famine in Genesis 12, verse 10. Isaac suffered famine. Jacob suffered famine. Just famine every generation, including the one you're suffering now. So it's not new. Abraham suffered. Isaac suffered. Joseph suffered. Jacob suffered. All of them suffered what? Famine. Hardship. Today's language is hardship. Hardship was in the land. But look at verse 2. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land. So he heard the word of God, what you're hearing now. I pray that what you're hearing will change your life forever. And verse 12. And Isaac did what? When did he sow? When? The time of famine. Is it the time to sow? No. In the natural, is it the time to sow? That's the time to complain. In the natural. But he sowed, knowing, the full, knowing full well the principle. It was famine. Isaac did what? The best time to sow, if I tell you the truth, is now. And Isaac sowed when? I increase my offering now. 
Because I know the principle. I know what? My nana offering, I increased it. It's the seven figures per service. I had to increase it. The nana offering. I, I normally give nana and dollar for dollar. Today I had to write checks because of cash. I got down. I had to increase because Isaac sold what? In the land. The year where there was what? Famine. So the best time to give the highest offering, if I tell you, is now. Children of God. Are you hearing me? And the same, the same year, the same what? This same year, God will bless you. Yeah. 13 and 14. And the man was great and went for and grew until he became what? For he had possession of flocks and possession of flies and store of servants. And the Philistines did what? They will envy you. Yeah. Do you want the world to envy you? Yeah. Do something extraordinary. So when the harvest will come, they will say, wow. Wow. But what did they happen? Because now God, they happen. Mm. Mm. You know, the natural tendency this period is not to give because of hardship. But it's on scripture as well. If you read your Bible, everybody that broke out of hardship was given in the time of hardship. There was a widow called the widow of what? Zerophath. This widow of Zerophath, I'll tell you that in the next service. She was at the crossroad, like the way you are, many of you. She said, this is my last meal. If I eat it, I will die. <laughs> Elisha said, make for me first. And she had faith. She had what? Faith. And heavens opened. Your heavens will open. Amen. Shout aloud, amen. amen. Shout a believe, amen. He said, believe the Lord your God shall believe prosper, shall ye prosper. Prosper connotes abundance, prosperity, and supernatural supplies. Do you believe that God sent me? Yes. Your story will change today. Yes. Your story will change today. Yes. Let me take two minutes to tell you something which I wrote in my, all my services. This season, this is just a warning to many of us. This season, especially in a country like Nigeria, is not the period where you need to live extravagantly. You have to avoid a wasteful lifestyle. You have to avoid what? You have to spend wisely. Even the almighty God hates waste. He distrusts waste. When he multiplied the loaves, he said, gather the fragment. Gather what? The, John 6 verse 12. He said, gather the fragments. Why didn't Jesus throw them away? God hates waste. There are places you are driving your car to now that you need to make a phone call because gas has also increased. One phone call is better than you just driving on the road and burning gas and burning what we call petrol. Yeah, they call it gas in the Western world. Plan your life. Call down. Call what? On your expenditure. Call down. Me that have money, I know how I spend money. Yesterday, I had to take fiscal cash from my own wife because... It was too well with me. I had to ask my no woman money now. <laughs> I said, my wife, I better find me physical cash. I have money, but I had to tell her to give me cash. It was a small money, but I needed cash. I had to ask her. I know woman money no be free. Oh. <laughs> if I give you money, you go give her back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you might give me ten naira, be ready for thirty naira back. <laughs> I'm not joking. Man. Please learn not to waste money this season. I said there's no future for those who spend without budgeting. Have budget. Have what? The prodigal son did not have a budget. If you read Luke 15, 11 to 32, say he began to be in want. This is not a time where you just spend money. You must have a budget. You must have a what? Know how you spend money. I'm going to use this for church. I'm going to use this for offering. I'm going to use this for this. So this period I have to cut down. Cut down expenses. Cut down. I read something and I quote verbatim what I saw. Stop saying I want to buy. Rather say I need to invest. Stop saying, I want to what? 
I want to buy this. I want to buy this. Start saying, I need to invest. It's investment that has a future. Things you buy have no future. Buying fleet of cars now when you don't have a house is madness. It's what? You must have an investment that you can fall back to. Now listen, let me say this in closing. The best way now is to have something that brings money. That brings what? So when tomorrow comes, the profit you have then. Listen, you want pleasure? Everybody likes pleasure. Is anybody who doesn't like pleasure? All of us like enjoyment. But why you like enjoyment? Invest then from the profit of the investment you start enjoying. Listen. Invest first. Then from the profit of your investment, you now enjoy life. Don't enjoy life when you have not invested. That's not wisdom. That's not what? That's not wisdom. You are buying a fleet of cars. Cars don't bring any profit. So invest and then from the profit you buy cars. You are enjoying life. Invest first. Not, oh, I want to buy this. I want to buy this. I want to invest. Any money you get now, be more conscious of investment. It's investment that have a future. Enjoyment without investment has no future. It's better you endure today and enjoy tomorrow than enjoy pleasures today and suffer tomorrow. Can I tell you one very funny thing? You'll be shocked. People who don't work for money have no value for money. I've noticed it. If you're a very hard-working person, you will value money. Check anybody. If you have a brother or sister who doesn't work for money, you don't value money. You'll say, this is more than I give me. This is more than. But if you are very hard-working, you'll be more prudent. That's why they say rich men are stingy. They're not stingy. Rich men know how they work for it. So they take time to plan. They take time to plan. Give a man one million naira who is not working. He will tell you this small money. But the man who is working will take the one million and invest it and produce something. It's time for us to stop wasting. It's time for us to invest. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. Me, who has the money? We co I collect money from my own wife. Is that true? <laughs> eh? True? The money I collect is more money, but I didn't have, the cash was too plenty. It was too, me that have the money. I don't ask her because she's my bank then. So I say, woman of God, find me a small cash. Are you going to say now? <laughs> I had to get cash. Cash was too plenty in my hand. I said, find me a small cash. He said, my husband, I just want to get to her. I said, bring her first. Bring her first. So I had to collect it from her. Are you going to say now? This is not the time to waste money. If I were you, my, waste, my spending level would come down. Knowing full well how the country is. Cut down. Cut what? Don't just drive car. Wah, 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 wah. No, no. Look for alternative to everything. Look for what? Are you going to say now? If you have a phone call will solve the problem, don't enter your road motor and start driving. Take a phone and call. Bro, do this for me. Don't just enter a car. Wow. The money you are paying for that gas or for transport is enough for a phone call. Take a phone call and answer the problem. You are entering the road. Wow. You, you burn 5,000. You're burning generator for something that's not producing profit. True? You're burning fuel for what is not producing. If you're doing it for business, okay, you can't just burn diesel. Is that not true? So cut down on even everything cut down. Nigeria has cut down. That's wisdom. That's what? That's wisdom. Cut down on your expenses. Don't say it's the devil. The devil is not our problem. If you want to buy a cloth of five million, go and buy a cloth of two hundred thousand. And sew it and wear. Instead of going to buy a cloth of five million. When the money comes back again, you can buy five million. Use the five million and invest in business. Because what you wear without any business does not make you look good. People size you based on what you are doing. True? A clerk wear gold and a manager wear t-shirt. Who would they respect? Thank you. So walk like a manager. It is not your dress that determines who you are. It is the tea you carry. 
So invest more on your brain, on your worth, more than your clothes. The greatest investment is on your mind. Develop your mind. Go for courses. Go for things that will develop your mind, not just wearing things. Develop your mental capacity. Go for things that will develop your mind. I pray church will not give a new beginning. Young men, develop your mind. Don't wear designer's LV when you have not attended one course. Young men, are you hearing me now? Don't wear a designer's shoe when you have not attended one course for your mind to be developed. Lift your right hand and say, Father, I put to practice the things I've heard from today in the name of Jesus. And all that have been declared must come to pass in my life. Go ahead and begin to pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, you will never go down. You will never go down. You keep rising. You keep rising. You keep rising. You keep rising. In the name of Jesus. Now, the prophetic with David Ibiomi. Suffering has ended in your life. I decree suffering to end in your life. Be exempted from every evil. You and all that concerns you. In Jesus' mighty name.